Okay, so I got four phones right in front of me. I have the iPhone SE 2020, I have the Google Pixel 4a, I also have the OnePlus Nord, and the Samsung Galaxy A71. Now, all these four phones, they all cost between $300 or £300 and about $400 or £400. So I really want to see which one is it worth it the most, which one is the mid-range king. So in this video, I'll be comparing everything from the design, the display, camera, performance, special features, battery, price, to let you guys decide which one out of all these four phones is the best one for you. Also, we have seven sections in this video, and I want you to pick a phone for each of those sections, and then at the end of the video, you'll see which phone is the best for you based on you know the number of times you've actually picked that phone. So without any further ado, this is the ultimate comparison between, well, the budget slash mid-range smartphones, the best ones that you can buy today. So get those snacks ready, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Okay, so starting off with the design, these four phones couldn't be any more different. You see, from the front, the iPhone SE has the most outdated design, as it uses the exact same front as the iPhone 6 from 2014. The Pixel and the Samsung are very similar, as they both have extremely thin bezels and just a single camera cutout, uh, the Samsung in the middle and the Pixel on the left, and then the OnePlus is similar as well, only that it has a dual camera cutout on the front rather than a single one. Now, I know design is indeed a personal preference, but from the front at least, I do actually prefer the Samsung Galaxy A71 the most. Oh, and in case some of you are wondering why we actually chose the A71 uh, instead of the A51, well, that's because the A71 has actually dropped in price and it does actually have better specs than the A51. Okay, now taking a look at the back and the build quality, and there are quite a few major differences between these phones. The Galaxy A71 definitely feels the cheapest, so it has a full plastic back and a plastic frame surrounding it. Then it's the Pixel 4a, which still has a plastic back, but since it's matte and the frame itself blends in with the back, uh, it does feel far more premium than the A71 does. Then we have the OnePlus Nord, which uses a glass back, but a plastic frame. Uh, this one already feels so much better than the other two. And then finally, we have the iPhone SE, which has a full glass back and also a full metal frame. Uh, the iPhone definitely feels the most premium, but we do have that six-year-old design on the front, whereas these other three phones, they all use a modern 2019-2020 design. But yeah, out of these four phones, um, I do actually like the OnePlus Nord the most design-wise. We do have a very modern design from the front, uh, while not necessarily sacrificing too much on the build quality. So this is my pick, but let me know in the comments which one is yours design-wise. Moving on to the display, and I gotta say, all of these phones, they all have a very good display panel. There's like not a single phone that I wouldn't recommend because of how bad the display is. They're all very, very good. However, there are a few differences in terms of the display quality and just a few display features between these phones. The biggest difference, to be honest, is when it comes to the size. So if you're looking for something small and compact, then the iPhone and the Pixel are the best options. They're about the same size, the Pixel 4a is only a tiny bit bigger, but the display size difference is quite noticeable. So the iPhone has the smallest display at 4.7 inches, while the Pixel 4a has the second smallest at 5.8 inches. The good news is that you can actually use both of these phones easily with one hand, whereas the other two are so much bigger and yeah, you need multiple hands to use these. Um, just joking, you just need to. Anyways, uh, the OnePlus Nord comes with a 6.44 inch display, while the Galaxy A71 comes with the biggest display out of these phones, a 6.7 inch panel. Now, the second big difference between these displays is the display panel technology that they each use. So all of these phones, except for the iPhone, they all use an OLED display. The iPhone still has an LCD display, meaning that you have perfect black levels and essentially an infinite contrast on all of these phones, except for the iPhone. Um, the third difference is when it comes to the resolution and then the pixel density. So here, the Pixel 4a actually has the highest pixel density at 443 ppi. Then it's the OnePlus at 408, then the Samsung at 393, and then the iPhone at 326. What this means is that when you're looking at these displays up close, 
the Pixel 4a has the sharpest image, while the iPhone has the least sharpest image. If you watch a lot of YouTube videos, all of these phones, with the exception of the iPhone, can play 1440p as well as 1080p YouTube content. The iPhone can still play 1080p, kinda, but the display resolution itself is lower than 1080p, so we're not actually watching 1080p content here, but rather 720p at a higher bitrate. Okay, now the fourth difference is when it comes to the color and how good these displays are for editing photos and videos. And here, I actually prefer, personally, the Pixel and the iPhone the most. I feel like they do have the most natural colors, but the OnePlus and the Samsung, they're both very good as well. Okay, now the fifth difference is when it comes to the brightness. So we measured the brightness with a professional display calibrator and the iPhone SE measured in at 720 nits, the Pixel 4a at 710 nits, by the way this was on max brightness uh, on a full screen white surface, the OnePlus at 560 nits, and finally the Samsung Galaxy A71 at 550 nits. Number 6 we have the refresh rate. So all of these phones, with the exception of the OnePlus Nord, they all have a 60Hz refresh rate. The OnePlus Nord has a 90Hz refresh rate, meaning that anything you do on this phone uh, feels significantly faster and more responsive than on the other phones. Animations are 50% more fluid, and using it in general feels so much nicer on the OnePlus compared to the other three phones. Now, these were the big changes display-wise, but there are a few other smaller changes when it comes to the display as well, which I do want to mention. So, for example, the iPhone SE has a true tone display, which can automatically adjust its color temperature to match the lighting conditions around you, essentially just making it easier uh, on the eyes for when you're reading. The Samsung and the Pixel, they both feature an always-on display, and the Pixel allows you to tap on the display once to turn it on, whereas on the OnePlus and the Samsung, you actually have to double tap, and then on the iPhone, you have to press the home button uh, to even turn the display on, which is not convenient at all. So yeah, overall, um, I actually like, once again, the OnePlus Nord's display the most, but the Pixel is definitely on, uh, on the second spot, in my case. So yeah, let me know in the comments which one has the best display for you. Now, just a bit off topic, guys. A few weeks ago, we did a video on the best TV that you can buy for the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. Now, that video was not sponsored, by the way, but the reception on that video was incredible. So uh, thank you, guys. And this time, LG has reached out to send over and sponsor a look at their brand new soundbar, as that TV was indeed an LG OLED TV. So this is the LG SN11RG soundbar, and it is the highest end model that LG sells. Not only is it a soundbar, but it also comes with two speakers and one subwoofer for an immersive 7.1 surround sound experience with premium Meridian audio, which makes it sound extremely clear even at a high volume level. It supports Dolby Atmos as well as 4K Dolby Vision video pass-through so that you don't need multiple HDMI cables. And it even supports the Google Assistant. Oh, and you can use this soundbar with any TV. It doesn't have to be an LG OLED TV or even an LG TV for that matter. Now, LG has also sent over these three LG X-Boom Go PL series speakers, and these are honestly really, really cool. So they come in three sizes, they're all water resistant, they feature USB Type-C charging, the PL5 and the PL7 feature two woofers on the side, as well as RGB lighting, which you can adjust yourself. And the sound quality coming out of these speakers is very impressive, even on the small PL2, uh, as they all feature Meridian audio, just like the SN11RG soundbar. You can pair one speaker to multiple smartphones, or even pair multiple speakers to the same smartphone. Up to 100 speakers can be connected at the same time using LG's wireless party link feature, so you can even pair these to your TV and amplify your audio experience that way. With a 10-hour battery life on the PL2, the small one, 18 hours on the PL5, the medium one, and 24 hours on the PL7, the large one, the new LG X-Boom Go PL series speakers uh, are the perfect choice for anyone looking for some portable speakers. Check them all out using the link below, and thanks to LG for sending all of these goodies over and sponsoring this segment. Moving on to the camera, this is where it gets 
pretty tricky. So the iPhone SE has a single camera module, which is actually the exact same camera as the main camera module on the iPhone 11 Pros. Uh, the Pixel 4a also has a single camera module, which is the exact same camera as on the Pixel 4 XL. So the iPhone SE and uh, the Pixel 4a, they both have flagship level cameras. The OnePlus Nord and the Samsung Galaxy A71, on the other hand, they have mid-range camera modules, each with four individual lenses, which I'll get to in just a bit. So here's a quick comparison of the same shot on all of these phones. Uh, so let's zoom in a bit and take a look at the detail and let me know which one looks the best. Okay, in this one, we're actually going to zoom in uh, at the exact same level into the shots. So yeah, let me know which zoom do you like the most, which telephoto module, uh, you know, some of these phones, the OnePlus and the Samsung, they do have a telephoto module. Now the OnePlus and the Nord, they also have an ultra wide angle module, uh, which can give you shots such as this one. Now, this is something that we do not have on the iPhone or the Pixel. So again, only Samsung and OnePlus have this. And the OnePlus also has a two megapixel macro module, but I mean, to be honest, this, this one's pretty bad. So <laughs> I wouldn't use it, but you know, it's, it's there. Now, when it comes to nighttime photography, the iPhone is really the only one that doesn't have a night mode. All the other ones do. So let me know in the comments which one of these shots looks the best in your opinion. Now, when it comes to video, the iPhone is the only one that can do 4K 60, while all the other ones are capping out at 4K 30. Uh, by the way, this is how the video quality looks on all of these phones, so do let me know which one, again, do you prefer? Now, moving on to the front-facing camera, here's a quick test on all of these. Uh, pay attention to the HDR processing and the overall sharpness. Now, when it comes to the video uh, with a front-facing camera, the OnePlus Nord can actually record 4K 30 and even 4K 60, which is strange because it cannot do that on the back, while the other ones are stuck at 1080p 30. Okay, so I'm just taking a look at my results now, and I picked the Pixel 4a four times, so in four shots. I picked the iPhone SE in three shots. I picked the OnePlus Nord in three shots as well, and the Galaxy A71 in two shots. So that means that overall my pick is actually the Pixel 4a. Even though we do not have an ultra wide angle module, uh, the night mode is incredible. Astrophotography is also just amazing on this phone. And yeah, you just cannot go wrong with a Pixel 4a when it comes to the camera. Obviously, if you care more about video and you need 4K60, then the iPhone is a better choice. But keep in mind that the iPhone does not have a night mode on the front or the back, uh, whereas all of these other phones do. But yeah, let me know in the comments which one did you guys pick in terms of the camera. Okay, now when it comes to the performance, CPU-wise, the iPhone SE has the most powerful processor, the Apple A13 chip, which is really the exact same processor that's inside the iPhone 11 Pro the most powerful phone on the market. Now, all the other smartphones, they have mid-range processors, with the OnePlus having the second most powerful chip, the Snapdragon 765G, with the Pixel and the Samsung having uh, the Snapdragon 730G. Now, RAM-wise, the iPhone has three gigabytes of RAM, while Samsung and the Pixel, they both have six, with the OnePlus having eight gigabytes of RAM. Unless you buy it from India, then it will have six. Now, when it comes to storage, the iPhone has 64 gigabytes as the baseline, while the other three have 128. Again, if you buy the OnePlus from India, it will have 64. Other than that, 128 everywhere else. Okay, so now let's do a quick speed test. I have about 10 apps in front of me, and let's see which one of these phones can launch all of these apps the fastest. Okay, so starting off with the clock app, uh, now we have Google Chrome, now we have Google Photos, and it seems like the iPhone is actually in the first place so far. Uh, Instagram, then Twitter, then we're going to go on YouTube and go to subscriptions. And the iPhone is definitely the first, the Pixel seems to be the second, followed by the OnePlus, and then the Samsung. TikTok, the iPhone is first, and next up we have Epic Games. So we're actually going to launch Fortnite, and let's see which one of these phones will actually launch it faster. I'm just going to uh, speed up this section a bit because this is a bit too slow. Okay, so it seems like the iPhone has actually loaded up Fortnite the first, followed by the Pixel 4a, uh, and then I think it's the OnePlus, followed by the Samsung. Uh, yeah, all of these do take a bit longer to load. Now, we do have Call of Duty uh, Mobile next, and the iPhone has loaded this one the first, then we have Google News, 
And yeah, the iPhone's pretty much done in one minute and 20 seconds. The other ones are still loading Fortnite. Okay, I'm just going to speed up the whole video once again because these loading times are nuts, but uh, the Pixel 4a actually finished loading Fortnite the second, followed by the Galaxy A71, followed by the OnePlus. And now when it comes to Call of Duty Mobile, it seems like it's the Pixel 4a again. Google News, and there you go, the Pixel 4a finished in one minute and 56 seconds while the Samsung Galaxy A71 finished in 2 minutes and 6 seconds, followed by the OnePlus Nord at 2 minutes and 7 seconds. But now, using these phones, I do have to say, the OnePlus feels definitely the fastest. That 90Hz refresh rate makes a massive difference, uh, so even though it is not the most powerful one, using it definitely makes it feel like one. Okay, so what about special features? Is there anything unique that each of these phones can do? Well. Yeah, actually, there's loads of unique features. For example, the iPhone, ironically, has the highest number of special features. It has IP67 water resistance, up to one meters of depth, up to 30 minutes, as well as wireless charging. Uh, and none of these phones, none of the other ones have any of these features. The OnePlus Nord is indeed sealed on the inside, so uh, it might be able to sustain some water damage, but it doesn't actually have any official IP rating. But while the iPhone and the Pixel have a capacitive ThinkPen reader, Pixel on the back, iPhone on the front, uh, the Samsung and the OnePlus, they have an in-display ThinkPen reader. Uh, Samsung's one is okay, but the OnePlus ThinkPen reader is crazy fast. The Samsung, however, has a microSD card slot uh, in case you want to expand that storage even further. Now, when it comes to the speakers, the iPhone and the Pixel, they both have stereo speakers, while the OnePlus and the Samsung, they only have mono speakers. So here's a quick speaker test. <laughs> If you care about 5G, the OnePlus Nord is the only one that supports 5G. And now there is one more special feature which makes a huge difference on all of these phones. And that is the haptics. So the iPhone, the Pixel, and the OnePlus, they all support haptic feedback. The typing experience though, uh, it's simply the best on the Pixel, followed by the OnePlus. So the iPhone doesn't actually have any haptic feedback on the keyboard, unless of course you do a trick and you install the Google keyboard. Okay, so overall, in terms of special features, I gotta give this one to the iPhone. You know, we get water resistance, we get wireless charging, we get zero speakers, plus those haptics. These are some very useful features to have. So what about what about a battery? Well, the iPhone has the smallest battery capacity at 1,821 million powers, followed by the Pixel 4a at 3,140, followed by the OnePlus at 4,115, and then the Samsung at 4,500. Now, I haven't used any of these for long enough to be able to tell you guys that, oh, this one actually lasts you for longer. But I would actually put my money on that being the OnePlus Nord, especially if you set the refresh rate to 60 Hertz. Oh, and all of these phones support fast charging up to around 50% in 30 minutes, but the OnePlus supports up to 70% in 30 minutes, and it also comes with a fast charger bundled in the box. All the other ones do as well, but the iPhone actually, well, the iPhone does not. So battery-wise, the OnePlus takes this one as well. Okay, so in the end, which phone is worth it the most? Well, at the moment, in the UK, for example, the iPhone SE costs £420, the OnePlus Nord costs £380, the Samsung Galaxy A71 costs £360, and then the Pixel 4a costs £350. Now, in terms of each of the previous categories, design-wise, I picked the OnePlus Nord. Display-wise, I picked the OnePlus Nord once again. Camera-wise, I picked the Pixel 4a. Performance-wise, once again, the OnePlus Nord. Um, special features wise, the iPhone SE with water resistance, wireless charging, battery wise, the OnePlus Nord, and price wise, the uh, Pixel 4a, of course, because this one is the cheapest one. Another thing that you should keep in mind when buying these phones is longevity. You see, the iPhone SE, since it's an Apple product and it also comes with the Apple A13 processor, this will be supported for many, many years to come. I would say probably at least at least four years, if not even five. 
Um, now, Google does tend to support their Pixel phones for quite a long time as well. Uh, but then the Pixel 4a comes with a Snapdragon 730G processor, which is quite a bit on the lower end. So I'm not sure how well this phone will actually age in terms of the performance. Um, I actually think the OnePlus Nord will age better because OnePlus also supports their phones for quite a long time. And this one has a more powerful processor. And then on the last place, we have the Samsung Galaxy A71, which, you know, Samsung doesn't actually support their phones. Uh, at least th they do support the flagships, but not so much in terms of the mid-range phones. And this one also has a pretty weak processor and it's already pretty laggy. So yeah, <laughs> this will not age up that well. But yeah, let me know in the comments, which one would you guys pick and why? So here's the thing, in my opinion, if you're looking for the best bank for the buck and, you know, performance wise and everything else, just go for the OnePlus. It is far the best choice here. Now, if you're looking for a very, very good camera, um, and you're in the iOS ecosystem, go for the iPhone SE. If you don't really care about the iPhone or the Pixel, um, then just get the iPhone again. It still has a better camera overall. If you're an Android user and you definitely want an Android and you care a lot about a camera, get a Pixel. And you know, I'm not saying that a Samsung is, is bad. Probably if you, if you just want a big display, that's a great panel. Um, and you don't really care about a performance or anything else, uh, yeah, just, just buy the Samsung. But let me know in the comments which one would you pick and why. Uh, if you want to purchase any of these, do consider using our links below. They're affiliate links, so they do support the channel, so thank you. It would be awesome if you guys could subscribe and hit the bell icon if you have enjoyed this video. Yeah, this has been, uh, this has been pretty much it. I'm Daniel, this has been Zenoftech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenoftech, signing out. Cheers.